All right, y'all. So I'm gonna keep it real. So far, this has been way better than anything I got to experience in high school. But this one, this one right here is definitely a masterclass that I am looking forward to. Baratunde has engaged so many through his views on how to be a truly engaged citizen and how we as a society can wield our collective power to improve society. Now this session dives deeper into that topic and will remind us all of our role in making the world run better. So let's talk about citizening, which is not an easy word to say, by the way, I've been rehearsing it. It's a good tongue um, twister. <laughs> it really is. So let's talk about that. And, and the idea of taking ownership of that word for its positive connotations versus its, its negative meaning for some or implications for some. Yeah, you know, we, we made this show, How to Citizen with Baratunde, and it's, I've been, it's been a show I've been trying to make for a while. And the very first version was simply called Citizen. Um, and I struggled even then with using that label because legal status has been used uh, to divide us and has been weaponized increasingly over the past few years in the United States, but also across Europe with migrants um, mm -hmm. and, and the backlash against that. So broadly across the West, you have an anti-immigrant, anti-migrant rising tide and so citizenship status um, has been used against folks. And as a black American, that's been used against us as well. So I feel a lot of solidarity with people who are um, trying to be seen as human, regardless of their legal status. So citizen as verb felt uh, like a good reinterpretation rather than dropping the term, let's reclaim it, let's reimagine mm -hmm. it, let's live into a bigger version of it. And that's what we've tried to do. I love it. And I love everything that it suggests. Um, one of the things, like as I've kind of been, as we've been going through a very activist time in our country over the past few months, um, is I realize asking people to citizen and to be active is a big ask. Hmm. And that, you know, in, in our bubbles, we kind of feel like everybody around us is very active and aware. But I'm, I'm realizing that to be active and to be aware and curious is, is not commonplace. So how do you inspire people who are traditionally bystanders to be more active? Like, or is there, is there a way to be a, to bystandingly citizen or is that an oxymoron? <laughs> so help me with, you know, how to get more people engaged because they're not enough. Yeah. So a, a phrase I, that we did not use with the show is, civic engagement that's just that's a buzzkill no one gets excited about that <laughs> and and i think there, but implicit in that and in someone in your question is a model of action or model of engagement that's very formal that feels like a heavy lift it's like oh i gotta i gotta knock on a door for some candidate i've got to go to a city council meeting right i've got to know who my judge is ah it's so much work um and there are other ways to show up as a citizen and so what we explored, and it wasn't on my mind in the beginning, uh, my fiance really brought this to the show. She's one of our executive producers, which is thinking about action in two levels, internal and external. And it's not actually a merger. Now that they kind of, you're watching me think out loud, remember how the show came together. So I had an early model of what action looked like. She made it cleaner and more refined, but at core is this assumption that a lot of us have that it means going out into the world and doing something like get people to sign a petition right? versus things you could do alone, things you could do just in your heart or in your mind. And so a lot of the ways that we citizen are really ways that we build a relationship with ourself, ask ourselves questions, consider things, just consider and sit with it. Uh, one of my favorite versions of this is a question that came from uh, an activist in Milwaukee who has a group that's engaged in the black community there, but she asks them a question, which I think is a, I think is an internal exercise. What does it mean for your community to thrive? Just think about that and mm -hmm. kind of sit with that and things emerge or what was your model of relationships? Are you, were you raised in a way to prioritize self uh, reliability, autonomy, or were you raised in a way to value interdependence and group loyalty? 
knowing where you come from and where you are and where you stand is a really important prerequisite, I think, for showing up for anybody else. And so to be an engaged citizen really means starting with engaging with yourself. Well, let's dig a little bit into the four pillars of citizenship or citizening, I should say, um, because I love these. So kind of go through the four pillars. Yeah. And these came from uh, some of the guests we've had on the show. This came from a lot of many hour big whiteboard working sessions here in the house with Elizabeth. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we both have huge whiteboards in our, in fact, you know what, let me just show you real quick. All right, so that's mine. <laughs> it's like the five, it's the five foot version. And then that's awesome. He's got one. So we got these competing whiteboards. Um, and, you know, to have a framework for making the show felt important before launching into the thing, almost like having a constitution before fully launching a nation. So there's four, four pillars. One is to show up and participate. Mm -hmm. This is an active thing, and it requires us to be invested and involved. Uh, we don't just outsource to other people. Two is to invest in relationships with others and with ourselves, uh, but particularly recognizing that we are dependent on each other, that we actually need other people. And that's a, it's an admission to some folks because we like to think of ourselves in the West in particular as uh, strong by ourselves. I made it on my own. I worked hard. I did this. Mm -hmm. The fact is you didn't give birth to yourself. Yep. So you depended on at least two other human beings for your life. It does take a village. Right. Even if none of them was there for you after that, right? Yep. You couldn't be here without them. So in the most extreme case, we still need other people. Um, and we do this citizening thing with other people because uh, you can't really citizen by yourself. It kind of misses the whole point. Third is that we understand power, understand our power. To citizen is to understand that you have many sources of power, that you have many ways to use it. And voting is one, spending money is one, spreading ideas is one, in terms of how you affect what other people do. Uh, there is, force is on that list, but it should be at the very bottom because there's so many other ways to use power. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole episode we spent on this, but I think it's really important to dig in one further step, which is that power, Eric Liu taught us this lesson about what power is. And he said, power is, um, it kind of compounds it grows amongst those who already have it and tends to recede from those who don't, almost like compound interest over time. That power is always in contention, right? And that you can create more of it. So a lot of us feel powerless. We're like, oh, those people over there have power. And I got to go beg for something from them because they are the powerful ones and I am the weak ones. But you can build your own power. Mm -hmm. When you and a group of people get together and decide to do something or not do something, that's power. You do a walkout or a sit-in, that's power. You sign petitions, that's power. You agree to change how you speak about a certain topic. You agree to let someone into your group, mm -hmm. that's power. And so you can shift it and move it and it's always flowing. So whatever state you feel like you're in with power, it's never permanent. And I think that's mildly disconcerting because it's like, okay, there's nothing stable, but it's also, there's an impermanence and there's faith in that. To me, it's motivating to know, or right, however low you feel, you can change that. It may take yeah. some time, not gonna be easy, but power can move. So understanding that's a very important part. And then the last, the fourth pillar of what it means to citizen is to work on behalf of the many and not just the few. And I think, the, I get, to me, this connects to the second one in terms of building relationships with other people. We have a, an aversion to collectivism in the United States and in the West more broadly. And we use words here like socialism, that's communism. If you just want to like help another person, um, we have an us versus them and a finite resource mentality, which is, well, if, if I help someone else then I have less for me mm -hmm. and they didn't work hard for it, I'm giving away my hard work. And, whew, first of all, we should all just breathe for a second. There's a lot of tension, a lot of anger in that response. But if we acknowledge that we need other people, which is big, it's a huge step. Oh yeah. And we ac accept this lesson that was in the very first episode you cited, uh, Valerie Cowers, the woman we had mm. on the first show, that a stranger is just a part of me I do not yet know. But right? it's kind of a deeper version of that idea of what a relationship even is and what that mutual dependence is. Then when you do something for someone else, you are also doing it for yourself because we're connected. Mm -hmm. when, when I help my neighbor 
be safe from COVID, I'm also protecting myself from COVID and my family and the other people that are more explicitly in my circle. So we've got to, you know, citizening is all these things. We show up, we invest in relationships because we can't do any of this alone. We understand our power and use it. And we do all this for the benefit of the many and not just the few, because we are part of the many. Out of many, one, e pluribus unum is like the whole, right. the whole ball game for the U.S. at least. So I know you end your podcast with kind of some action that you encourage people to do. What's something that listeners to, to us right now can, can do that's maybe, you know, a first step for citizening and, and in terms of an action they could take? Yeah. Uh, listen to the podcast, How to Citizen with Baritone Day, five stars. Was, well, that was my next question was to plug your podcast. But. <laughs> I'm like an Uber driver for podcast. Five stars, five stars. Um, I think you can do a couple things. I, I can't just do one. Now with, now with you, Janice. Okay, um, good. Ask yourself sincerely what it means for your community, for your organization to thrive. And think big about it. Think, don't think like survive. Think thrive. Right. What is that? And paint that picture. And it'll be, it's hard to unsee it once you've imagined it. And that will create some sort of ripple effect of further demands and hopefully actions in your world. I think it'd be helpful to uh, ask yourself, what have I done for others just in 2020, you know, in this very difficult year, <laughs> what have I done for someone else? And it could be very small. So, okay, I'm not looking for heroics here, but just make that list, at least mentally, and give yourself a little pat on the shoulder for that, a little pat on the back. Because that's citizening. You're investing in mm -hmm. the commons, in the shared space, in someone other than yourself. And that's part of it. I think in the context of business, and we've talked a little bit about race and whatnot, I think understanding where you've come from uh, is really key. Knowing history and not cherry picking the pieces of your history that make you feel good. Uh, knowing, knowing the parts that are a little embarrassing, a little awkward, maybe even a little shameful as an organization, as a society, as a family, all the levels. Because mm -hmm. um, we need to integrate that as we move into the future. I think so much of what holds us back is that we're afraid to look back. And we are embarrassed and afraid and ashamed of who we have been or, or the people who mm -hmm. allowed us to be where we are. And I think we need to move past that. Those are three sort of internal self-reflective exercises that I think could yield something positive in the world. And then for the, the outside stuff, um, we live in a society that's about people power. And so I want you to really assess your power. And we have this popular movement where I'm, I'm not powerful, who me? Little old me, I don't have any kind of power whatsoever. That's a nice excuse, right? Right. And yeah. we minimize and we undermine ourselves and, and it's a great cop out. Um, but we all have power. We all do. We, every time we spend money, we're exercising yeah. power. Every time we speak up, we're exercising power. Every, every choice we make to associate with someone or not, to go somewhere or not, where we live and how or not. So take a look at the power that you have, mm -hmm. where you're spending your money, where you're spending your attention. Um, and choose to use it, some of it, in service of the greater good, in service of others, in service of society, uh, because we cannot do this stuff just alone. And I think you'll find when you start consciously choosing to use your power in these ways, it actually makes you more powerful, not less. It's got a really great return on investment. That's true. Yeah, it's That's true. Good. Yeah. That's true. All right. Well, before we go, had a citizen with Baratendi on your local Spotify, Apple, iTunes, right? 
I, I want to make you sure. called it local. That's great. It's like your local no, no. station. Well, that's why I was like trying app. to channel back. <laughs> Uncheck your local listings. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How to Citizen with Baratunde is available wherever you get podcasts. And if you don't get podcasts, that's okay. Uh, you can go to howtocitizen.com and all the shows, you can just play them through a web browser yep. in, in that way. Uh, you can find me, I'm Baratunde, wherever you find Baratunde's on the internet. Especially you don't, you don't really have to spell the whole name out even. You just get yeah, like... Just yeah, just Baratunde.com, on IG, um, and a special, special offer, limited time offer just for you, SAP. <laughs> I'm going to give you my phone number. <gasps> give me your digits, all right. 202-894-8844. It's a kind of a community text number. It doesn't blow up my physical phone, but it hits an app that I check constantly. And put SAP in there so I know where you came from. Uh, but I use that to make announcements about, for example, the season two launch of our show, mm -hmm. which will be coming in the first quarter of 2021, or when I'm going live on television, if you're interested in things like that. So it's kind of a lightly automated, but always me um, way of engaging with people beyond the algorithmic uh, monstrosity that is social media. I love it. It's great. And it's been a pleasure working with you on this and speaking with you today. You so too. thank you so much for your time. Thanks for bringing me in. <laughs> <laughs>